that on earth do dwell. Sing out your faith with a cheerful voice. Delight in God whose praise you tell, whose presence calls you to rejoice. Proclaim again that God is good, whose mercy is forever sure, whose truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age endure. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Shall we pray? Most merciful God, through Jesus Christ you have set us free from slavery to sin, that we might become your children. Help us in the service of praise to sing of our freedom with joy, to long for it in our prayers, and to be assured of it in the proclamation of your word. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we join together in saying the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's Older Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. May the Lord shower his blessings upon the reading of his word. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their, most, their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The epistle reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel? For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, 
so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Today's gospel reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew and James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Here in today's readings, all glory and honor be to God forever. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let us pray. We praise you, everlasting God, and sing of your greatness. You have scattered your fires through space that we might be inspired by starlight. You have given us our sun for warmth and light. You send clouds around the earth to carry showers of life-giving rain. You grant food and strength and hope to your people. How great you are. God, creator of all things, you are the source of all that has been and all that will be. Day by day you sustain us, and night by night send refreshing sleep. You are always with us, ever available, never too weary to listen. You look on the powerless with compassion. You restore those who are faint and exhausted, renewing their spirits. Lead us, we pray, to quiet retreats where we, like Jesus, may have our energy restored, our vision expanded, our purpose clarified. May these moments of worship unite us as a community of serving people and equip us to bring healing to the brokenhearted, practical help to those who bear scars of abuse, food and shelter to the hungry and homeless, your word to all who need good news. We celebrate the privilege that is ours to share the gospel, to extend helping hands to those in need, to lift up our eyes and see the wonders that surround us. When you meet us in the morning, we are equipped for the day. When you embrace us in the evening, we are assured, comforted, and protected by your Spirit. Lift us now on eagle's wings, that we may soar to new heights of confidence and trust. We seek your blessing, that our lives may bless others. Amen. 
An undertaker phoned a man to let him know that his mother-in-law had just died. He asked, should I bury her, embalm her, or cremate her? The undertaker was shocked by the man's answer. That's because the man said this, all three, we'd better take no chances. Our gospel reading for today is about another mother-in-law, the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. Simon has just become a disciple of Jesus, but Simon's mother-in-law is not dead. She's suffering from a fever. She's very ill. And if something isn't done soon, she very well could die. Let's take a closer look at this reading. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this mother-in-law gets the help that she so desperately needs. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus has just had a pretty exciting morning. He kicked it off with some preaching and teaching at the local synagogue. There he gave a sermon that amazed and astounded. It knocked his hearers for a loop, but it left them scratching their heads and asking all kinds of questions. Who is this Jesus anyway? Where did he come from? How is he able to teach and preach like this? He teaches as one with authority. Where did his authority come from? Who gave him this authority? But that was just the beginning of it all. Halfway through the sermon, something quite unexpected happened. A man with an unclean spirit interrupted Jesus. He cried out at the top of his lungs, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? To the amazement of everyone there, Jesus calmly rebuked the spirit and ordered it to come out of the poor man. And it did just that. That left all of those people with even more questions. They all left the synagogue that day wondering the same thing, wondering who this Jesus was wondering where his authority came from, and wondering how Jesus was able to command even unclean spirits. And that's right where our reading for today begins. It's just a few minutes past noon as Jesus and his four new followers leave the synagogue together. We know those four, Simon, Andrew, James and John. As a group, they head straight to Simon and Andrew's house. Their stomachs are probably growling. They can't wait to get something good to eat. And they're looking forward to a chance to kick back, relax, and unwind. Especially Jesus. He's already had quite a day. But as soon as they get inside the house, it turns out that his day is just beginning. That's because Jesus learns that Simon's mother-in-law is ill and in bed. She's not feeling good at all. She has quite the fever. Now that might not seem like such a big deal to us modern people with all of our antibiotics and cutting edge medicines. But in Jesus' day, a fever could prove quite serious. It could very well lead to her death. With Jesus hears about her situation, he goes right into her 
And to the great amazement of all, he simply takes her by the hand and lifts her up. And just like that, the fever departs. She feels good again. And she is so very, very, very thankful to be healed. In response, she does exactly what all people of faith do. She rises to serve. She becomes the very first deacon. She rises to serve the one who also came to serve. The one who will later wash the dirty, tired feet of his followers. Can't you just picture it? She begins rushing about to take care of her guests, to make them feel at home. She takes their coats and sandals. She invites them to have a seat. And then she quickly goes about preparing something for them to eat. Once they're finished with a delicious meal, she invites them to kick back and get some much-needed rest. Somehow she senses that her son-in-law's new friend will have many demands placed on him before the day comes to an end. And she's exactly right. Mark tells us that no sooner than after the sun had set, a boatload of people show up. It looks as if the entire town has gathered in the front yard. The Sabbath is officially over, so now they feel free to come to Jesus for help. They want healing, so they come and they bring their loved ones to Jesus to be made whole. Those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are tormented, they come and hope that Jesus can do something. They've heard about this healing in the synagogue, and they've heard about Simon's mother-in-law. So they come to get in on the action. They come to be healed. The people wait until evening because the religious law forbids the carrying of any burden through a town on the Sabbath day. That would be considered work, and work is forbidden. It's against the law. The Sabbath runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Since they don't have wristwatches and cell phones, they judge that the Sabbath is over when they can see three stars in the sky. They think that Jesus has already pressed his luck by healing that man in the synagogue that very morning. So they wait, and they wait, and they wait until the sun sets. Then they begin the work of transporting their loved ones. They carry their families, their friends, and their neighbors, everyone who needs help. They just pick them up and carry them to, G to Jesus to be healed by him. Jesus sees the long line of people waiting to see him, and he doesn't turn them away. He doesn't say that there's nothing he can do. He doesn't send them off. His heart goes out to them. Moved with compassion, he does something. He acts. The office is open. He gets down to business, and the healing begins. Mark tells us that he cures many who are sick with a variety of diseases. He even tosses out a few demons to boot. Early the next morning, while it's still dark, Jesus gets up and goes to a deserted place, a place where he can be alone, a place where he will not be disturbed, a place where he can spend some much-needed time with God in prayer a place where he can recharge his spiritual batteries, 
where he can seek direction and guidance from God alone. Simon, Andrew, James, and John discover that Jesus is missing, and they go looking for him. They hunt and they hunt. Eventually, they track him down. They confront Jesus. They tell him that they're not the only ones searching for him. The whole town seems to be wondering where he is. News of his healings has spread. They want more. They expect Jesus to stay and enjoy his newfound success. So his reply must have shocked and even disappointed them. He plainly tells them that healing is not to be the focus of his work. He lets them know that he lets them know what it is that God wants him to do. God wants far more from him than a few miracles in one small town. And God wants far more from him than just popularity. Jesus puts it like this. God wants us to go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And that's exactly what he does. He goes on throughout Galilee, proclaiming God's message to all with ears to hear. A Baptist preacher and his wife decided that they needed a dog. Ever mindful of their congregation, they knew that the dog must also be Baptist. They visited an expensive kennel and they explained their needs to the manager. He assured him that he had just the dog for them. The manager brought a dog out and began giving it commands. Fetch the Bible, he ordered. With that, the dog dotted over to the bookshelf, studied the book titles, located the Bible, and brought it over to him. Next, he gave another command, find the 23rd Psalm. The dog, with marvelous dexterity, leafed through the Bible. Just like that, he found the correct passage. He proudly pointed to it with his paw. Duly impressed, the preacher and his wife purchased the dog. That evening, a group of people from their church came to visit. The preacher and his wife began to show off their new pet. As he quickly proceeded to find several Bible verses, all present were greatly amazed. Finally, one man asked, Can your dog do normal dog tricks too? Well, let's see, replied the preacher. Pointing his finger at the dog, he gave this command, Heal. Heel. The dog immediately jumped up on a chair, placed one paw on the preacher's forehead, and began to howl. The preacher turned to his wife in complete shock. He then uttered these very words, We've been swindled. That manager swindled us. He sold us a Pentecostal dog. The good news for us this day is that this Jesus is still with us. He's still the one that we meet in Scripture. Still the one yesterday, today, and forever. His heart still goes out to the sick, to those who hurt, to those who suffer, to those who worry and are filled with fear, to those depressed and possessed. And he, do, and he still does something about it. He still shows compassion. He still acts. He still heals. But he's even more than that. He is more than just a healer. 
He's more than just a medicine man. He's the one sent to us by God. The one sent to proclaim God's good news. The one who shows us what God looks like. And the one who shows us what God's world looks like. And it's a world of healing. But it's much, much more than that. It's also a world of justice, a world of peace, a world of joy, and a world filled to overflowing with love. Thanks be to God. Amen. For the bread which you have broken, for the wine which you have poured, for the words which you have spoken, now we give you thanks. Our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who desire to live in peace with one another. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins is the new covenant in my blood. So drink from it, all of you. Gracious God, we thank you for your great love, the many blessings you pour into our lives. We thank you for sending Jesus the Christ, the one who heals, the one who welcomes us to this table, but most importantly, the one that brings your good news to the world. For all this, we give thanks through Christ our Lord. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy to find leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leading on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms i have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms the lord bless you and keep you may his countenance shine upon you and grant you peace amen